Hi yogis, today we'll be doing a yoga class for women. Yes, shout out to all the ladies out there. We'll be focusing on the liver meridian and poses that match that meridian. We'll go more into detail about that soon enough. See you on the mat, let's get started. Let us begin, let's come to our mat. We'll start on our backs today. Just lay on your back. Right now we don't need the pillow or the prop. Um, but keep your props next to you, that big juicy pillow, just for when we get to those deeper poses. We'll be starting on our back, and if for any reason starting on your back isn't uncomfortable, maybe pregnancy or for any other reason, then you can do the same thing on your side. You can just lay on any of the sides, preferably to the left. But if you're okay with me, we're laying on our backs, knees are bent, feet on the floor. You can place your hands either on your belly or one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart. And close your eyes. We'll be starting our mindfulness practice today in this position rather than a seated position just to really get comfortable. Start focusing on your breath. any sensations you feel within your body, physically, mentally, or emotionally. Just being aware of them and being with them without any need for change or judgment. Feel your heartbeat slowing down. Feel the energy, the anxious energy Slowly melting away from your day. And as you continue this mindfulness work within yourself, I will describe a little bit of what we'll be doing today in our practice. In our Yoga for Women class today, we'll be focusing on more of a yin yoga side, as we'll be focusing on the liver meridian of the body. It starts from the inside of your right toe, travels up the leg, does a little swirly jumbo through the genital and pelvic region, travels through the belly, crossing through the liver, the liver and the gallbladder, up through the chest, and all the way out through the top of the head. So this meridian is one that's connected to our ovaries, it's connected to our nipples, so we want to really activate and stimulate this meridian with the poses we'll do today, as well as clear any blockages that we have within this energy channel so that we can prevent any future diseases or imbalances within these regions, which we hold so dearly to us. And because our, these areas are always fluctuating from our cycle, our periods, or whatever point in your cycle you, add in, you, you are at in your life, so we really want to balance them out, re-energize them, re-stimulate them to make sure we're giving back some love and health to them as they work so hard for us. So that's what we'll be doing today. Um, if you have any questions about this afterwards, you can write it down below in the comments or let me know and contact me. <laughs> if not, we'll be returning back to our mindfulness together. Deep breath before we go into our more physical practice, which won't be as physical as a normal hatha or vinyasa class. So it will be more restorative holding poses for longer amounts of time so that we can go into the deeper layers and deeper healing within ourselves. slowly move our hands to the bottom of our lower belly, kind of pelvic region, right where the thigh creases with the hip. Just place your hands here and just observe gently. Observe what happens here as you breathe.
Feeling the lower belly rise and fall in the pelvic region. Noticing any sensations you feel in that butt. You're really focusing in this region. Now I'd like to invite you to add a little pelvic tilt motion. So you'll basically be tilting the hips up and then tilting them down. Keeping your hands in that spot and observing. Observing the movement of your pelvis, your hip joints. Gently rocking forward and back, only in the pelvic girdle. Breathing deeply through the nose. Just releasing any stale energy that surrounds our pelvis. And in the lower back, and the top of the thighs and the hip joint. And if it feels good to you, you can add a little bit of a circular movement in the pelvic girdle. Try as much as possible to really isolate, feeling the movement of your pelvis circling around. And then change direction if you're circling. If not, you can continue doing the up and down motion. It's okay too. And then we'll slowly come back to center. Then we'll lift the right foot up towards the sky and just flex the foot, activating that right leg. Letting the circulation flow from the foot to our upper body, releasing any swelling within our legs. The leg can be straight up or maybe a little bit lower, depending on your hamstring flexibility. You can also be slightly bent. Just make sure that foot is flexed. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll hug the knee towards our chest, the right knee. Just giving it a slight hug. If you feel a bit flexible, you can hug it a little bit more towards your right armpit, or if you have a belly, you can also bring it towards your right armpit. So whatever feels more comfortable to you. We'll take a couple more deep breaths here. Feel free to add circles in the ankle joint to release any tension there as well. And then change direction. And then let's place the right leg on top of our left leg to find this gentle thread the needle variation. Flex in the right foot, energetically pushing the right knee forward, but we'll stay here on our backs, no need to go deeper. Keeping the hands on your hip bones. Breathing deeply. Just stretching the hip flexor, warming up our hip joints for some deeper stretches later on. Breathing deeply through the nose. Always coming back to that mindfulness work Focusing on your breath, focusing any sensations you feel within the body, within the stretch, quieting the mind. I know holding a pose for a little bit longer than a couple breaths can be a little bit challenging, especially if we like to 
move a lot, you constantly do things, so it's kind of hard for us to just stop for a moment. But always come back to your breath. Your breath is your home base. Know that it will guide you through this. And let's slowly change legs, grounding in the right leg, straightening the left leg up towards the sky, flex the foot, can be a little bent, can be a little bit lower, breathing deeply, feeling the circulation trickle down from your foot, down your leg, to your hips, bringing more circulation to our hip region. start to feel your foot kind of falling asleep and that's okay it will happen plenty when we're holding poses for a couple minutes just moving the circulation to specific parts in our body take one more deep breath here and then we'll hug the knee towards our chest or towards the armpit region, whatever feels better for you. Giving it a nice juicy hug, and then maybe circling the ankle, that feels good to you too. Also releasing any tension within the ankle, and any swelling within that region as well. And change direction. And then we'll bring the foot to the top of our right leg. We're thread the needle with the legs, flexing the left foot, energetically pushing that left knee forward, but staying here in this gentle variation. Hands back on the hip bones, breathing deeply. Observing the pelvic girdle as you move through these poses, feeling it move around, working on that hip mobility and freeing any stale energy within our hip joint. One more deep breath here. And then we'll bring the left leg back down to the ground. And we'll slowly come up onto our hands and find a regular seat. You can keep the eyes closed if that feels good to you or open the eyes gently. We'll go into a breathing technique called Sheetali or Sheetkari. I'll show you both to see whatever works for you. It's a breathing technique that helps cool the body physically in temperature, but also mentally if you're feeling kind of hormonal and anxious and all up in your head, this is a great breathing technique to just stabilize your emotions and cool yourself down. So what we'll do is first you'll make a taco tongue. Look like you're curling the edges of your tongue towards the center. And if you can't do that, which some people can, and it's totally okay, then you can just clench your teeth together. That's the difference between the two breathing techniques that I just mentioned. Shitali is with the, with the tongue, and shikari is with the teeth. Okay? So once you've got your starting position and your facial structure, you'll inhale through the teeth or through the tongue, and then close the mouth and exhale through the nose. Keep going at your own pace. And 
Noticing any differences in your energy. You can channel that cool breath on the tongue or between the teeth. We'll do a couple more of these. Last one. We're going to take a couple deep breaths at the center. Just coming back to your normal breath. Again, channeling any sensations you feel, any differences. And then we'll inhale, the hands come all the way up. We'll come into some side bend motions just to warm up. Exhale to the right. Inhale back to center. Exhale to the left. Just moving that energy around within our core. Keep going at your own pace. Using your breath to move slowly and deeply within the side bend movement. Couple more. Last one. Inhale back to center. Exhale, let's bring the left hand to the right knee for a gentle twist. You don't have to go in deeply today, just placing that left hand on the knee. And then the right hand can either be on the ground, it can just be on your thigh, it can go behind your back. But try not to work too deeply here. Just gently opening the chest, opening the shoulders. Feeling the belly expand and return back to center with your breath. Then let's change to the other side. Right hand to left knee, left hand, wherever feels good to you. Deep breaths, opening the heart, shoulders rolled back. And this gentle seated twist. Lightly massaging our abdominal organs. Increasing our metabolism working on our digestive system. And then let's slowly come back to center. And take a couple gentle cat-cows, seated. So just inhaling, reaching the heart forward, and exhaling, rolling the spine back. Up to you how deep you wanna go. Whatever feels good to you in this moment, if you're feeling like just gentle, nudge forward and back feels good to you you can do that too if you're feeling like you want to go really deep all is welcome just connect your movement to your breath deep breaths through the nose just warming up the spinal column again observing what's going on in the hips in the hip girdle in the hip joint you place your hands on your hips now, it should feel really warm in this region, which is what we want when we're stimulating our pelvic region. And then come back to center, make a couple circular motions, just like we did on our backs. Again, it can be gentle or deep, it's whatever feels called to you. And then change direction. Beautiful. And from here, we'll turn over onto our hands. And take a gentle toe stretch. We'll spend more time in the ankle stretch today since that's connected to the liver meridian. 
but just a moment to get that balance. We'll also stretch the soles of our feet, sitting on your heels. Hands can be either on your laps or at heart center. We'll take deep breaths, maybe weighting down onto your heels with every exhale you take. If that feels too deep for the soles of your feet, you can slightly um, take little breaks lift the hips off your heels but make sure not to untuck the toes because you don't want to lose this nice stretch for your feet take one more deep breath here and then we'll untuck the toes and sit on our heels for ankle stretch a couple options. You can play around with the variations. If this is too much for your ankles, then you can move the weight. If it's okay, you'll stay at the center. And if you want to go deeper, you'll move the weight back slightly with your hands on the ground or with your hands not on the ground for an added challenge. Whatever feels good to you. You can also start with a deeper one. And if it feels too deep, you can come back to center. Just playing around with this nice ankle stretch and the flexibility in our, in our ankles. Close your eyes, connect to your breath, connect to the physical sensations you feel within your ankles. Make sure your spine is still tall, your heart is still open. against the roof of your mouth it's said to really calm the mind as well so you can try that out and see if it works for you let's take a couple more deep breaths here Feel free to take a wider angle in the legs if you want today. That's okay. And then we'll start circling on the hands. Gently stretching on our wrist joints, our shoulder joints, our hip joints. Again here, feel free to take any speed or any size you want within your wrist circles. If you're feeling like going for a big circle, you can do that. If you're feeling a little bit more gentle in your energy, you can do that as well. Today I'm feeling a little bit more gentle in my energy, so I'll be doing nice small movements. And then let's change direction. Beautiful work. Let's come back to center and we'll go into some glute and hip firing up. So we'll lift the right leg back and we'll hold for a moment. Make sure you're lifting in the lower back and in the belly. One more deep breath here. And then we'll bend the knee and take some knee circles, working on that hip mobility and that glute strength. Try to get really big circles here within the knee. 
If you're doing small ones, that's okay too. And change direction. Ground in the right foot on the ground. <laughs> and then we'll tuck the left toes, move our weight back into our heels and press our hands to find a variation of down dog, but kind of asymmetrical and a lot wider. You're just leaning the weight back. Feel free to take a bend in the knees if you want. Finding length in the spine here, getting a nice hip stretch, hamstring stretch. You can take any movements that feel good to you. Let's take one more breath here. And then we'll drop the left knee down to the ground and take a seat to find half child's pose and a half stretch within the right leg. You'll flex that right foot to protect the knee and you're just leaning forward you can open the left knee slightly as well if that's more comfortable for you, or you can keep the leg beneath your body. Again, we're getting a gentle stretch within that left ankle, but also getting a nice hip opening in the right. Breathing deeply. Take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come back up onto our hands and bring the right leg back to tabletop. Let's find our grounding and then when you feel ready, lifting in the left leg, pulling the leg back, active core, active lower back. Deep breaths. Make sure the hips are stable and that you're not opening that left hip too high. Keep the hips aligned with each other. One more deep breath. And then we'll bend the knee and go into our knee circles. Feel the glute burn. Change direction. And then we'll ground with the left foot on the left side and come up onto our right toes. Lifting the hips and finding that asymmetrical down dog again. Taking any movements you want or maybe just holding it. Finding length within the spine. Tilting the hips up towards the sky. Nice hamstring stretch. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll drop the right knee back down to the ground and sit for half child's pose, half left leg stretch. Again, you can open the knee a little bit wider if that's more comfortable or keep the knee beneath your body. And then we'll slowly ground forward, flexing in the left foot to protect the knee. Deep breaths, focus on your body, focus on your breath. Try as much as possible not to get distracted by things that are around you. Let's 
Take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come back up onto our hands and find tabletop. From our tabletop, we'll slightly lift, not going up all the way to regular down dog, just a little bit, enough to help us bring our right leg forward to find a low lunge position. Again, if it feels more comfortable, you can find a wider angle here and bring both hands on the inside, or if you're okay, the leg is in the center and hands on both sides of the leg. If you need more cushion for the left knee, you can do that here. If not, you're with me in our low lunge or in the in yoga, which is called the dragon pose. Take a couple deep breaths. We'll be here for a minute, so get comfortable. If this isn't comfortable and you're like, oh no, I can't hold this, you can place pillows here under your hips and make it more restorative. If you're feeling really juicy and flexible, you can lower down all the way onto your hand, onto your elbows and find a lizard pose, but that is very deep, so it might be harder to hold for that one minute. Whatever variation you choose, be with your breath, be with the sensations that you feel within your body. Close your eyes if you want to, help you go inwards. Feel the hips and how they release ever so slightly with every breath you take. From the first breath to the fifth breath, it feels like a different pose entirely. Take one more breath here. And then we'll slightly push onto the right knee to find this open lizard or a twisted dragon variation. Coming up onto the razor's edge of your right foot, you're gently pushing on the right knee. You can open up your heart towards the sky and sink a little bit deeply. Or you can stay looking towards the ground if it helps you feel more balanced and more stable. And you can close your eyes, of course. Noticing the differences in your feelings with every breath you take, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Being aware of them and knowing that you have control over them. They don't have control over you. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then let's slowly come back to center. Then bring the leg back and change legs. Bring the left leg between your hands. Again, if you have any props, pillows beneath your hips or Cushions beneath your knee, you can change sides. If you want to go deeper, you can open up that leg and drop down to a lizard. If you want to stay high on your hands, you can do that as well. Deep breaths in whatever variation you took. When my eyes are open, I just find myself looking at all these things to distract me from and get out of the pose. But when I close my eyes, I can just connect to my breath and I can quiet the mind. And all of a sudden, the pose starts to feel more comfortable, almost like you could fall asleep within it, even when it's a deep stretch like this. Take a couple more deep breaths here. And 
and then we'll open up the left leg. Leaning onto our right hand, pushing against that left knee to find our open lizard or twisted dragon pose. Again, you can feel free to sink down onto the elbow if the wrist is getting a little bit sensitive. Or you can stay on the hand. Just make sure to ground into your fingertips so that the weight is evenly distributed. Breathing deeply. A couple more breaths. You got this. And then slowly coming back to center. And let's find our down dog again. But this time we'll take a full down dog for a couple breaths. If you like that wide angle down dog, you can take a wider angle with the hands and with the legs. Or if you want just a regular one, you can do that as well. Adding any movements that feel good to you just to release in the hip joints from those deep stretches. Beautiful work. From here we'll slowly come down to a seat. And we'll grab that big juicy pillow that I told you to break. And we'll come into Baddha Konasana, or bound angle, feet together. The closer your feet are to your groin region, the deeper the, the sensation will feel in the inner hips, and the deeper the, the stretch will be for you. If you don't want it to be so deep, then you'll move the feet a little bit more forward, which is okay as well. You have that option. Grab your pillow. I like to kind of place it in the middle and just kind of hug it. Or if you want to go deeper, you can place it on the ground and lean on it. Whatever variation you want to choose, make sure that you feel comfortable. We'll be here for about two minutes, okay? You got this. <laughs> if you also need more pillows, feel free to get them. Don't, if it feels uncomfortable, make it comfortable, okay? Let's go. Even if the stretch isn't so deep because you're using props, because we're holding it for a longer amount of time, you will still get the same benefits, knowing that you're going deeper into each layer of muscle that you have within your inner hips, releasing any stale energy, any blockages within that energy channel. You feel more open and released afterwards. If you're looking towards one side, I'll let you know when to change sides with the head so that it's an even stretch on the neck. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you don't have props, you can do this without props as well. You would just rest your hands on the ground and lean forward, but that will be pretty deep. So just so you know that you can do this without a prop as well. I don't know about you, but this feels amazing to me. I think I could be here for probably like half an hour at least. <laughs> if you're looking towards one side, now's the time to change sides. sensations you feel in your inner hips. If 
Take a couple more deep breaths here. And then we'll slowly come back up. We'll keep the pillow close by because we'll come into Dragonfly, which is a wide angle variation fold. We'll be here and we'll go towards each side. If it's too deep for you to do this in a wide angle, then fold towards one side so you can do a half butterfly and a half straight leg, or you can just do the full one the whole time, up to you. Again, we'll fold towards the right side. If it's too deep without a prop, which it probably will be, then bring your pillow onto your right thigh and lean down onto it. Always in the beginning when you use props, you're like, this is too comfortable, I don't feel anything. But once you start breathing into it, slowly, slowly, you'll feel the stretch. You'll feel how the stretch is going deeper into the layers of your muscles and your fascia, the connective tissue that wraps everything within your body and stores emotions, memories, traumas, stress. We wanna get into those deep layers and release feel relieved and heal. So you can really feel that happening when we are able to hold a pose for more than a couple breaths. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly move to the other side, bringing your pillow with you, your handy dandy. And then slowly lowering down towards the left leg. get a little too comfortable and you're like I'm just gonna take a nap <laughs> return back to your breath return back to your body <laughs> the nap is okay too yeah in your own home practice but when we're in this yin pose we want to stay aware we want to stay awake even when we're drowsing off a little bit we're still alert enough to access our subconsciousness and heal the region that we're healing in the pose Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. And then we'll slowly come to center. Again, for more deeply stretch. For more of a deep stretch, you'll put the pillow low and you'll lean onto the pillow. If that's too deep, you'll kind of create this slant position and rest your head onto the pillow and give it a hug. Your chin can be on it, you can lean onto it sideways. Find the perfect variation for you where you feel comfortable, but you still feel the stretch. And if it's totally uncomfortable, you can always take this to the wall. If you're by a wall, you can sit against the wall and open your legs up on the wall and do the poses there too.
If you're looking towards one side and you want to change sides, you can now. top of the shoulders, in the chest and clavicle region. Also something important to note, in our yin practice and the yin poses, there's an alignment to the pose, but the alignment is not as important as surrendering to the pose. So if something feels good to you to do within the pose, then it's okay to do it as long as it feels good to you. That's the whole point of the yin practice is to surrender into the pose comfortably. Use your breath as a tool to find that comfort within every pose. Let's take one more deep breath here. And then we'll slowly come up onto our hands. Tuck our toes. And then we'll slide the right leg forward to find pigeon. Now in pigeon, if your hips aren't on the ground, you can place your pillows beneath your right hip so that it's a little less intense, a little bit more comfortable. And then you can lower down here onto your elbows or onto your head. If it's okay and your hips are on the ground and you're flexible, then you can go into the full pigeon and maybe bring the pillow for your head. That's also a good option. Play around with your props to find your optimal comfort within every pose. For more intensity with the pigeon, 
you'll slide your foot more forward to create this kind of seven shape within the leg. For less intensity, you'll bring the foot closer to your hip, okay? Surrender to the pose. Allow the pose to heal you within these deep layers of your body. We'll take a couple more deep breaths here. your hands and let's change sides sliding the right leg back and sliding the left leg forward again taking any variation that's good for you maybe the cushion under your left hip maybe the cushion forward for your arms and your head for more intensity sliding that foot forward to create this seven angle for less intensity the foot comes towards your hip Deep breaths. Know that whenever your mind says, okay, it's time to get out of the pose, that's usually where the real pose starts. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. And then we'll slowly come back up onto our hands. I'm sure you're feeling really nice and loopy at this point from all these nice restorative poses. Let's swing our right leg around and come onto our backs. Back onto our backs, I should say. We'll go into a couple restorative twists. The first one will be a twisted root or a reclined twist with eagle legs, depending if you're on the yin yoga or regular hatha yoga. So what we'll do is we'll lift the right leg over the left, interlace the legs, so that they're binded together. And then you'll let the legs fall towards the left side. And open the arms up by your side. You don't have to look towards the right. You can if you want a deeper twist. Or you can stay looking up towards the sky, kind of having this open body, um, open front body. Opening the heart region, the shoulders. And if this twist is too intense for you, you can also unbind the legs and just place them up together, the knees together towards the left. That's also an option. Breathing deeply 
over here into this twist, releasing any tension from the back. Again, massaging our abdominal organs. Also, when we bind our legs together like this, it creates a lot of space in the lower back and releases any tension from this region. And then let's slowly come back to center and change legs. Left over right, binding the legs together or just keeping them knees together, whatever, if you want one more gentle or more intense variation. And then drop the knees towards the right side, either looking towards the left or keeping the head in the center. Hands are open out towards the sides, shoulder length. Deep breaths into this twist. towards the ground with the breaths you take. so that you have length within your spine and so that your hips aren't lifting. From here, you're slightly pressing onto the feet to bring the knees in the direction of the ground, getting a little bit deeper into that hip stretch, obviously as much as you want. If already grabbing your feet is a deep enough stretch, then not too much pulling, but if you want to go deeper, you can. And if it feels good to you, you can start to rock right and left. Adding a little back massage as you get that inner hip stretch as well. Maybe smiling, channeling your inner happy baby, whichever happy baby you can visualize in your mind. And then we'll slowly release our legs for Shavasana. I'll give you a couple variations to choose from. If lying on your back is uncomfortable, you can lie on your side. If you have any lower back pain, you can keep the knees bent and then lower the knees towards each other, onto each other at the center. Or if you want a little bit of an inversion and to move more circulation from your feet to your head, you can move by a wall and place your feet up on the wall. Three variations, actually four, if you want to count a regular Shavasana. Take any variation you want. Again, let's place our hands either on our belly or one hand on the belly and one hand on the heart, just like we started. Returning back to our mindfulness which we didn't really leave from the beginning of the practice since we practiced a lot of restorative postures today. So it's been a really nice, deep, full mindfulness practice today for us. Observing the feelings of your body movements under your hands. Observing the movement and the journey of your breath through your body. Observing any differences you feel in your hip region, 
if the prana energy chi feels a little bit more free and released this is what we wanted from our practice today so i hope you feel that if not it's okay too none taken <laughs> Feeling grounded and humble by the floor beneath you. Finding the quiet stillness within your mind that we always long for throughout the day through the busyness of our lives. In turn, allowing our body to work properly and better When we're in this calm, relaxed state of being, our body functions as it's supposed to. Whereas when we're in a, a stressful environment, our body kind of comes to a halt and stops all of its productions and usages. So always remember that when you feel any stresses and pressures, come back to your breath, come back to your body, Know that in turn, it means you're protecting your health, you're taking care of yourself, which is, I think, the most important thing you can do in this lifetime. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. Full deep breaths, really oxygenating our body. And then when you feel ready, slowly using your hands and your legs to help you come up to a comfortable seat. Any comfortable seat you choose, feeling the circulation flow from your head to your legs again, keeping the eyes closed, preserving that energy we just cultivated within our Shavasana. Tall spine, open heart. Channeling the differences in your energy. Here, feeling that clearage of blockages within your liver meridian. Activating and stimulating our women organs, our ovaries our breasts, our nipples, these are activated and cleared, ready to work properly. Let's rub our palms together to create heat, reiki, healing energy that our beautiful women hands know well how to cultivate loving, healing energy. And then place them gently over your eyes. without putting pressure on your eyes. And let's add a little eye exercise to the end of our practice, circling the eyeballs in one direction. And then in the other direction. And then slowly let your hands come in front of your face, looking into your palms, allowing your eyesight to refocus on all the little lines on your hands, the lines of your life if you choose to believe so. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Give a thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe to my channel and follow my journey here on YouTube. Thank you so much. Bye.